Welcome back everybody, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Pillars of Eternity, the Triple Crown run. Uh, where we left off last time, we saved the Crucible Knights, hooray! And they offered to uh, go with us to this um, Animancer hearing, and that's what we're going to do right now. There might be a fight, I don't actually remember. Do we need anything? Our spells are looking good. Oh right, I went and got a new group. I forgot about that. You guys probably don't know half of these characters. So uh, we have a barbarian named Lorne the Feisty. He's level 7, obviously. Uh, 17 might, 12 constitution, dex, perception, and 10. Intelligence, 21 for the maximum area of effect stuff. Uh, resistance is 12, so he has a little bit of deflection and will. Not a whole lot. Survival athletics. He's ready to. He's pretty much ready to go. The other new person is our brand new ranger. And we're going to try her out. She has. She's mostly doing pet stuff. So things like resilient, vicious, and faithful companion. Um, predator sense. And other things like that. So she should be pretty good. I have the wolf companion. It has a fair amount of endurance, actually. I named it Bear after, of course, my dog. So there we go. I have a wolf named Bear. Much like in real life, I have a dog named Bear. So yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> um... I have not played around with them yet in combat, so we're going to hope it goes well. She's using yes. Borsain, I believe. Yes. Um, and he is using, he's not in the right group position, but he's using Justice for the moment. That being said, he also has a pair of Forge Master's Gloves, which I picked up. And they are really, really, really good for him. Yeah. What they do is they make a giant flaming two-handed sword, which is going to lay waste yes. to everything. So, yes. that's our brand new group for now. You are not the person I thought oh. you were. There you are. I'm here. That's fine. Yes. That's decent group stuff. Uh, do I talk to you? No. Justiciers. Will you let me in? Nope. We also are supposed to... Ooh, hang on. Everybody in, don't worry. Thank you kindly. Actually, A blade in anything the in this room? No. Someone's blocking that door. The place, or a place, has been reserved for you on the balcony. Go to the upper floor. Okay. I will do so. Upper floor, you say? Damn. I was hoping that chest was lootable, but it was not. We received word from Commander, Commander Cleaver that you would be attending. The balcony has been opened to you. Well, okay then. I will go hop up on the balcony. Why not? The room below is animated amidst a heated debate. All the representative groups have, are easily discerned in the crowd. Crucible knights, stiff in their noisy armor, sit in one section. In another are well-dressed members of House Dominell, casual, watching with a predator's interest. Still elsewhere are the ramshackled dozens, who have made no special effort to dress up for their liege lord. Interspersed are animancers in their academics' robes with expressions either sour or concerned. Well then, answer me this, Master Barash. If you animancers represent our best hope to cure the legacy, what progress can you demonstrate? At the back of the chamber sits the duke, sprawled in his throne, worn down but alert and feisty nonetheless. As I've said, it isn't about progress, it's about potential. My house would agree, your grace. We see great potential in its future. And I suppose your blazing profits <laughs> during the legacy don't have nothing to do with that, do they, Dominell? You can't have it both ways no more! Animancy goes, or this country goes! You need to calm down. So you admit, Master Baras, that Animancy is no closer to stopping the legacy than it ever was. No, we've had many promising experiments. Cadman Azo has shown... Cadman Azo murdered a child for a complete failure. We should be hanging him right now for what he done. The dozens won't stand for it. What he did. We should be hanging him right now for what he did. Not done. The experiment failed, yes, but his work... His work was sabotaged, my voice rings out among the crowd, commanding and resounding. Ah, our new delegate from the Knights of the Crucible. What makes you say sabotage? All at once the attendees turn their faces towards you, a mismatch of in judgment and incredulity. Only the Duke, a wild-looking man with a scraggly beard, seems unfazed by your interruption. I met a false patient in Brackenberry Sanitarium who had tampered with Azo's machinery. The fuck's that even matter? These are people who would toy with the lives of our children! Indeed. Even assuming there was sabotage, 
Is this Anomancer Azo not still accountable here? No, he is not. This was a responsible scientist who was manipulated. Horseshit! These Anomancers can't be trusted! Look at what happened in Heritage Hill! Our supposed protectors from Crucible Keep can't even clean up the messes Anomancy leaves! Your Grace, we'd have a much easier time of it if our knights weren't so occupied trying to keep their organization from igniting a revolution on our very doorstep. Heritage Hill is blood on your hands, Justicia! You turn a blind eye, and look what happens. I have been to Heritage Hill since the quarantine. Though the knights were unable to control the damage, it was not animancy, but an ancient machine that caused it. Or... They're both the same thing, just one is worded differently. I'll say the Crucible Knights are blameless here. This is not the workings of animancy but an ancient device in Tier 1 Nowneth. You have some strange taste in travels, friend. The height of your tails expands with every breath. Ask around. When I see problems, I take matters into my own hands. I had heard whispers of a new delegate set to attend today's hearing. I was told to expect threats and intimidation, which is nothing new here, as you can see. Very well. Perhaps you are the sort. I am. Tell us what you saw in Heritage Hill. Tier Nowneth houses an Anguithan machine that holds dominion over the flow of souls. It was this machine that made the district undead. Even if it is as you say, we have testimony that a group of Animancers had been spending time there. Surely their tinkering had something to do with this. I have reason to believe that there were others at the tower who might have done this. Animancy has many enemies. You need only look around this room to see it. I like the Animancers, so I don't want them to die off. You're just... you're missing the point! Everywhere there's Animancers, there's disaster! Point in case. Anywhere there's humans, there's disaster. You can really make that case about anybody. We all know what Widewind's legacy's really about. And it ain't about some sparkling saint from Creed Ceres who's mad because he took a stroll down the wrong bridge! That's racist. It's about a bunch of so-called intellectuals fucking with the natural order while the rest of us gotta suffer for it! That's anti-intellectualism. Is it, though? Should we not take the time to reach a clear conclusion? I mean, what proof do we have? Good point. My son and daughter are buried beneath the floor of my house. We don't own no land, so that's where we lay them. My son. My wife let him slip when she was bathing. Got water in his lungs he couldn't cough up. My daughter. We put her to bed one night, and the next morning she wasn't breathing. This hollowborn thing, it ain't ending. And it ain't ending because we still let these charlatans play God. There's your proof, you damn copper fucker! Wait, you're blaming Animancy because your wife drowned your kid? That doesn't make any sense. Um, and also, your daughter going to sleep and not waking up in the morning, there's lots of reasons for that. Sid's is very real, it depends how old she was, I guess. Enough, Adric. Lady Dominell makes a point. If it's animancy, then why do the other states that permit the practice not suffer the same fate? Who among us can say he truly understands why the legacy has taken hold here? Well, I can. The crowd begins to mutter, the sound taking a doubtful character. Widewind's legacy is the creation of the Leaden Key. Cademan Azo's downfall was their work, as was the Tower on Heritage Hill. They want you to do this. They want animancy to fall. The dull muttering expands into a din of skepticism that fills the hall. I have seen them in the ruins of Irglen Fath, operating machines that disrupt and redirect the flow of souls near towns like Gilded Vale and Deerford, where the legacy is universal. As a watcher, I have heard their dead confess their plot. They are stealing the souls of the unborn. Beasts. Another lunatic at the hearing. Did you remember to lock your sanitarium before you left, Master Barask? Birth in invalids until your womb dries, or no, birth invalids until your womb dries for all I care. The rest of these people will hear the truth. You must know, friend, that the leaden key is a mantle for small-time ruffians and children at play. I'm not saying you're a liar. Not yet. But you'd better start making sense of all this. Help us believe you. I like that guy's voice. It's so awesome. I wish I had his voice. I would take it in a heartbeat. The Duke leans forward in his throne, a trace of curiosity in his eyes.
what do I want to say? What is more likely, that the gods are destroying Deerwood for a science practice in many parts of the world, or that a group of people hates animancy and wants it suppressed? Another guess! Throw him out on his ass, your grace! He's wasting our time! Shall I tell you then of the robes these people wore, of the runes inscribed in a dead language, swearing oaths to Watika to seal knowledge with a lead key of lead? Sound like children to you? Uh, I don't know about all of this. You've made an... Unexpected case, friend. I'll say that much. It seems we have a new possibility to consider, at the very least. How was it you came to learn all this? The Knights of the Crucible were instrumental in aiding my investigation. I see. I am impressed the Knights seized such an unlikely opportunity to find an end to all of this. You better stand up for me, wench, or I'll shoot you. But these theories you. are about more than Widewind's legacy, even though that is our most pressing concern. Let's say for the moment that I were to take you at your word that our friends in Brackenberry Sanitarium and their peers bear no responsibility for this curse upon my country. I'm curious, what would you do if you were in my position? Animancy should be studied in Deerwood. If you don't, somebody else will, and they will wield great power over you. Very well. That is all I wish to hear. Not just from you, but from everyone. Many days we've been at this. It is time we put it to rest. I want to thank the delegations for helping me collect my thoughts. And our new delegate, who has warned us of a new possibility that must be looked into. The time has come to choose a direction for the Deerwood. I am ready to make my pronouncement. Ramir de Barash, representing the interests of Animancers in Deerwood. Step forward. Your Grace. It's a tarp! It occurs to me now that my concerns about animancy may not outweigh its value. Forgive me, Your Grace. We will accept no judgment but our own. What's he doing? <gasps> no! Avenge the duel! No, no, wait! Oh. Stop this at once! Oh, oh that went poorly. <laughs> The words, shall I end it for you, ring in your ears. You find yourself gasping for breath, struggling to keep your own balance. You drop to a knee and watch as Theos hurries out of the building. The world dims around you. The screams and clashing of weapons are fading into silence. All that remains are the words, shall I end it for you? Theos stands at a pulpit high above an assembly of robed onlookers, you among them, clustered around a wide circular pit of stone. He addresses a woman, bound backwards, over a large iron wheel, overlooked, or overlooking the great stone maw. Many of the woman's fingers and toes are severed, and the bottom of her feet are charred black. The skin on one side of her face looks like melted candle wax, black and red and seeping, and the angle of her back suggests a spine in ruins, yet for all that, her expression betrays little of her anguish. I'll be right back, guys. I have to make a quick phone call. Sorry. Two seconds. I'll join these videos together in like half a second here. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah. I am already at peace, Grand Inquisitor. Are you? Her eyes are barely open, and her words come between strangled breaths, but they are steady, unbroken. Uh, that's not... You can't have steady, unbroken breaths, and st or steady, unbroken words, and strangled breaths at the same time. By having strangled breaths, it really means that the words are broken. But whatever. So be it. If you desire no end, you shall have none. 
I find you guilty of heresy. May the eternal prison bar your soul from passage, for it is beyond redemption. He nods to a hooded attendant who begins untying her from the wheel. I got Dominion of the Sleepers. You open your eyes to the beamed ceiling of the palace's grand entry hall. The clangs of metal striking metal waft in from outside. Along the side, the cries of the injured as you stagger to your feet. Theos is gone. Off to one side, you can hear the clinking rustle of chainmail, and you look over to see a wounded guard slumping against the wall. He is trying to say something, seemingly directed at you, but at first it is too faint to hear. He gathers his breath and manages to rasp out a few words. Lady Webb, she's the only one. She must be told. She will know what to do. Please find her. Tell her everything. The guard passes out and slides to the floor, still. If you pass out and slide to the floor still, you're probably dead. Let's go see if we can find some loot. Hey, if everyone's dead, maybe I can go get that treasure chest. I'm just saying there's no one around to see me steal it. Right? Kind of go ahead and grab that. Anything else around that I should pick up? Oh. Why aren't you in the fight, records keeper? I want to loot your stuff. Damn it. Damn records keepers. Watching the records so I can't loot them and steal them. It's just not fair. Oh, fear goes actually a quest we should probably do as well. Well met, friend. The woman's head is bowed as her lips move in prayer. Just as you approach, you catch her glimpsing at the statue near her. She notices you and forces a smile. Please be to Megrin, and welcome to her temple. How may I be of service? You seem upset. What's wrong? Her shoulders slump. This is about the fires, isn't it? She puts a hand on her shoulder. They're just symbols. You can't put your faith in them. Oh, but yeah. Slow down and tell me what this is about. The sacred pyres all around town. You must have seen the statues of the goddesses around the city, holding up empty brazers. She sighs. I've kept them burning steadily for 15 years, but I haven't been able to conjure them for months now, and the people need to see them now more than ever. What does that mean? It's my devotions and prayers that keep them lit, but lately when I try to play, pray, all I can think about are the hollow board all over the city, the grieving families, the refugees. She shakes her head. How can Magran allow us to suffer like this? What strength do we gain from a soulless child? And this has shaken your faith. She nods, running her hands through her hair, but I believe Megrin may be speaking to me again. She frowns and casts a quick glance in your direction. This will sound so far-fetched to someone like you. Not likely. Lately, I've been seeing visions, a place in the wilderness with pools filled with sunbursts of color, strange falls that seem to rise to the heavens even while they splash into the earth. She raises her hands as if framing an image to her vision, and behind the falls is a cave, filled with fire and heat and danger, and some token of my goddess. I know there's something there, but where it is or how to get there? She shakes her head. I've been meaning to ask around at the expedition hall to see if anyone recognizes the description. To be honest, though, I don't know what I'd do even if I found the place. Something else? Uh, nope. I'll do your quest for you, though. Cinders of Faith. That's another quest for us to do. We'll get to it eventually. It's not of super priority at the moment. We have a vote. There's some loud, booming music going on here. It's very intense. Oh man, there's fires and stuff. Stand down, we don't want to fight you. Cut them down, they're just peasants. Oh, they really are fighting. Wait, who's, who's... Should I join in? I think the guards are winning. <laughs> oh, that guy exploded. Well done, Justice Shears. I'm just going to say that peasants don't usually win against knights. It's a big fire going on. There's a bit of a civil war going on here. Let's go find Lady Webb. Where am I? Why am I? Oh, I see. I'm on the side of the Crucible Keep. There's a dead guard there, though. At least one of them got taken down. That's a big group of peasants. These all are in league with the Animancers. I just want to see who wins. I really have no strong... Um, I don't really care about the outcome too much. That's what I'm looking for. Who's winning? I think probably the Justiciers are winning. Yeah, he's barely injured. And the peasants are just getting annihilated. Anyways, we'll leave them alone to die. Goodbye, guys. I wonder what level we can go get Stormcaller. I think it's around level 10 or 11. We can go pick it up. 
That bow is amazing, and we should definitely get it for our ranger. On a ranger, it's so good, even better than on enchanter. You might notice we don't have enchanter anymore, which is going to be neat and interesting and slightly scary. Well, I'm going to take the Animancer boots. You burnt down the sanitarium, you monsters. I kind of want to kill all of you now. But whatever. You know what? It's all... Ooh, okay. The wolf still goes that way. Go on, run before they see you. Good point, run. Apparently he doesn't want to kill them, which I find odd. I mean, as the dozens are very anti animancy <gasps> Dead. Actually, we shouldn't go up and see Lady Web. I think this ends Chapter 2, and we have other things to do in Chapter 2 still. We might have to leave the city in somewhat of a state of civil war. I wonder if we can actually leave. I don't actually know if we can. You we're must gonna, gather your party before we're gonna lose the ability to do some of our companion quests. Not that we ever planned on doing them, but they're worth experience, so maybe we should do them. Let's see if we can leave the district. Oh, it's not looking good. I don't think we can. I think we have to go into chapter three. Oh well. You know what? This is a triple crown playthrough, not a role playing playthrough, so you must gather your party Worst case, we can't do our companion's quests. Who cares? If you want to see most of the companion quests, go watch the other playthrough where I do most of them. Except for the ranger and the druid. Yeah, pretty much those two. And I think the monk. It's a lot of dead animancers. It's not really stealing if everybody that owns this place is dead, so I don't really count that as stealing. Poor Lady Web. Also, the person that walked through all these animancers is pretty damn powerful. Loot a clock, loot a clock. We're going to loot everything because, in all honesty, I don't think we're ever going to come back here. Alright, that looks to be all of the things. Lady Webb lies still in her bed, an ornate cushion propping her back upright. The blood pooled beneath a gash in her chest is tacked and nearly dry. A shattered glass rests on the floor beneath her dangling hand. You can feel the faint aura of her fading essence in your ken. Reach out to it. You make contact and are immersed in a torrent of sensory input and experience. When it calms, you find yourself in the same room, lying in a bed with a glass of brandy in your hands. Through the walls from the streets outside come the sounds of screams and shattering glass and the cacophony of an angry mob. You take a sip and it warms your gullet. Across the floor or room, the door opens with, a, or sorry, opens behind a patient, steady push. Into the room walks Theos, the floorboards creaking beneath deliberate steps. You wait until the last of the brandy has trickled down your throat before you speak. I was... I was a fool to think I could tame these people. You came closer than most. A fine epitaph. No worse than any. You are concentrating, focus, focusing with all your energy. It feels as though you are diving into a stone wall over and over, but it cracks suddenly, unexpectedly, allowing the vaguest wisp of a thought to leak through. What's in Twin Elms? Did you pull that from my thoughts? I've had time to practice. Ah. He walks over to a small table and raises a half-empty brandy bottle to eye level. He seems to approve of the selection and begins to reach for an empty glass. I was saving that for someone. Pity. You know this is how it has to be. He replaces the brandy bottle on the table with care before approaching the bedside. He sits on the edge of the bed next to you. His words come freely, absent of all doubt. He draws a long, curved knife from his belt, smeared with fresh blood. 
With his left hand, he gently pins your sternum as he raises the knife in the other, its point dangling above your heart. Prove it. Theos slips the blade between your ribs and pushes it through. Layers of tissue separate with brittle, brittle papery stiffness, and blood wells up around the blade. A pulse of reflex causes you to drop your glass to the floor, and you hear it shatter. With the last of your strength, you take his knife hand in both of yours, a question radiant in your mind. For an instant, to your great surprise, the pathway to his mind is left open to you, unguarded, and the answer comes, simple, cataclysmic, in its reordering of your thoughts. As Lady Webb, you feel as though you have an answer you've searched for all your life, but in your own mind, her understanding lies just beyond your reach. You look at Theos with the wide eyes of someone seeing for the first time, and draw your last breath as black, velvety darkness descends over you. Smoke rises above the city walls in billowing plumes that blacken the sky like a storm. Behind the walls, the riots rage on. Known patrons of Anamancy are forced into hiding as looters ransack their estates and make off with their possessions. Anamancers are torn away from their families and dragged from their homes to be stoned to death in the streets. Word had spread immediately that Duke Avar had been assassinated and that an Anamancer was to blame. The city wasted little time in exacting revenge and little effort into evaluating guilt. In the center of it all, Brackenberry Sanitarium burned. And down the lane, Hodred House, the last bastion of stability in the Deerwood, had fallen silent. Now safely outside the city gate, your path points eastward to Twin Elms, where Theos is bound, for reasons that remain mysterious as the Leaden Key itself. Well, that is the end of this chapter, I think. Pretty sure. That being said, we are going to end the video here once we load. We just finished a chapter. I'm pretty sure we're on chapter 3 now. I can't really tell. I'm pretty sure we're on chapter 3 anyways. I don't know if it keeps track of that, but I think we are, and I don't think... Well, we could probably do some of these quests still. Regardless, we'll get to them eventually. A nightmare fragment. What is that? The floods have receded. The pass through Stormwall Gorge is open, and that's our next main area. That being said, we are going to look for some of the other side quests to do first. I do want to try out maybe a bounty or something with our new characters and see how well they do in combat. They should be pretty awesome, in all honesty. They're built to just dish out punishment just hands down her resistance sucks though, so she can't do a lot of will things she's got to stay back but she is going to be really really good at just destroying things she's rapid fire she's my rapid fire person now and we still do have our rogue right no we got rid of our who did we get rid of in total right we have our cleric or, oh. or mm -hmm. our priest I should say wizard ranger so we don't have a rogue anymore yeah and then we have our barbarian hey fighter, yes. paladin, but we don't have a chanter anymore. So it's going to be fun to try them out, see what they do. Worst case scenario, we go grab our old characters back and call it a day. So, like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. For those of you wondering when I'm going to be doing Siege of Dragonspear, it is coming pretty soon. Um, I do want to possibly finish Neverwinter Nights first before starting another game. I mean, technically, I have three games on the go right now. I have this Triple Crown run, I have Shadows of Undertide, and I have Antherian, but that's my Lunchtime Let's Play series. Then I also wanted to start on uh, Hordes of the Underdark. I did want to finish all the Neverwinters in kind of one, un like, order after another. One after another, that's what I'm thinking. And then, um, you know, go from there. But it looks like I'm going to take a small break between Shadows of Undern Tide and Hordes of the Underdark to do uh, Siege of Dragon Spear. And then I've also got my eye kind of carefully watching um, Planescape Tides of Numenera, which is also bound to come out pretty soon. So take care, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, by the way, over a thousand subscribers now. That's pretty cool. I, You guys know that I don't ask you to subscribe. I'm glad when you do, but... There's no pressure or asking for it. So for those thousand of you that are subscribed, that is awesome. And I'm really appreciative, appreciative of you guys watching the videos. Take care.